Hello guys, am I am I back now? I'm showing I'm showing live now. Am I actually back on? I can't tell. Hello. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Absolute nightmare. Hello, is anybody there? <laughs> ah, good. Right, okay. Uh, I'll wait <laughs> I'll wait another another minute or two. Okay. Um sorry about that, I don't know what happened. It just, everything just went um, west, as they say. If you can hear me, can you see me, though? Uh, <laughs> Leisure, is everything all right? Martin? Oh, CPUs is only 28%, mate. There's no problem there at all, Martin. Everything's fine. Oh, it's good. Okay, it looks like we're back, back to it. Um... I'll go to the overhead. Hello, Gord. How are you? Nice to see you. That's my friend, Gordon Rock. Gord Rock, thank you. Well, I'm sorry about that little hitch, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, we'll hopefully get back to turning. So I'll change the camera angle now and... Um, Okay, thank you for sticking with me. So, uh, if you if you missed it, uh, what I've done is turned a piece of this chestnut down to round. I formed a tenon on the end. I've cut a dovetail, and I'm going to place it into the forge or chuck. And what I like to do is just bring up the tail stock to um, really get it right on centre, and just put a little bit of pressure on it and then tighten up the jaws. And just start him off to make sure that it's... Yeah, that's pretty good. Now at this stage, I will leave the tail stock up just for that extra support. And when I've hollowed out, which is what I'll do when I've done the very rough, sh rough shape of the 
goblet bowl. Safety gear on. I'm using a half inch spindle gouge and uh, the lathe is running at about, or will be running at about 1500 revs. Now all I want to do here now is to decide where I'm going to have the bowl and I tend to work on uh, the principle of thirds approximately, not exactly but approximately. So if we're talking for the bowl, the bowl will be going into the stem here and then just start to make a very rough shape. Just nice light, light cuts. As you go along here, just lift the handle, keep the bevel in contact with the wood. Just a little bit more here. Can actually just raise the tool rest ever so slightly. Now as I said on the previous video, um, I'm not bothered about the finish on this, that there will sand out quite nicely, but all I'm trying to do now is get to the stage where I've hollowed out. So without further ado, I shall now remove the tailstock, and we've got the basic shape, and that's all that really matters at this stage. And make sure that you take out your live centre, because when you get a dig, in the elbow with that point, it's not a pleasant experience. I'm just going to move this slightly. That's good. Okay, so now as I explained, there are various methods of um, actually hollowing. You can either you can do a depth hole with your spindle gouge if you should so wish. Now we didn't do this on the last one but I might as well show the method and again make sure always that when you've turned your lathe off and you're doing a different cut that you start it off at zero or the lowest speed that you can. Now if you do a depth hole you need your spindle gouge at centre height when you're on the horizontal like so and all you do literally not too not too fast just doing a thousand revs now just over you just plunge in now there I'm a bit high so I'll just take that off okay and plunge And that is one way of doing it. The other way is to use a uh, Jacobs chuck, which is what I used last time. But all I want to do here now is just get this um, hollowed out so that we can get to the position we were on the last video. So I'm going to do a combination of push cups, push cuts and pull cuts. Just light cuts, freshly sharpened tools, like a mini bowl if you like. And all you need, you just change change the camera, uh, so you can. Oh, excuse me. 
Hold on a minute. Turn the lathe off. This is the turning hasn't got a problem, but everything else has. Cheers, John. I don't know what's happening here. This camera's not working now. Oh dear, what is going on here? This is an absolute nightmare. guys yeah that's working this one is not I don't believe this You need a production assistant for live streams. Well, all I can say is that, thank you, Martin, I'll try that now. That's got it now. Yeah, now we're now we're in business. Right, um, it's a bit far. It's a bit far away, but I won't bore you with the zooming in. Hopefully, you can see what's going on here. Thanks for that, Martin. Appreciate it. Uh, in mic, we trust. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too sure about that. So what I'll do is carry on hollowing here. Um, I did have it in a more zoomed position. Um, hang on a minute. We can still we still do that, can't we? We can work on the fly. That's the best way. He says. Again, bear with me just a second. Configure video and we'll go to there and we'll go to zoomy. Zoomy a bit. That's a bit better, I think. Focus off auto and apply. This is wonderful, isn't it? Eh? You can tell I'm a techie. Hopefully that's a bit nearer for you. Okay, so we'll carry on now with the um, with the hollowing. As I say, there are two methods of hollowing, or more than two methods, obviously. You can do the push cut, which is what I'm going to do to begin with, like a little bowl. Just nice, easy cuts. Or you can do the pull cut, and what the pull cut does is use the uh, left part of the wing, just to the left of the nose. And again, it's a, piv a pivoting action. You pick the cut up. You can hear that bit of resonance because there's quite a bit of uh, length from here to the to the chuck. Just nice. You can actually put the to rest up a little bit here. I also use the 6mm Hope carbide tool for hollowing which is a very quick way of doing it as well. Carry on with some push cuts. Oh, 
I'm taking bigger cups than I would, would advise, purely and simply, because I want to get it hollowed out quickly, so we can get back to the other bit of the... depth there. Whoop, to there, a little bit more to go. Now at this stage I've got the hollowing of the bowl down to about here, which is okay for this this particular now, what I tend to do is, you can either use an ordinary scraper, but I am very keen and fond of my negative rake scrapers. And this one, as I explained on the last video, is a simple square, uh, square scraper. Let's change the, the camera. This is a square scraper that I've just repurposed and reshaped. Um, to a mini bowl gouge if you like but has a 35 35 degree bevel and it leaves a really really nice surface and the other thing about negative rake scrapers is they aren't as grabby and with a normal scraper where you would have your handle up from the point of cut you don't have to with these um, with this sort of a grind it is much more user friendly the downside and everything has a caveat is that the edge obviously doesn't last as long as a conventional scraper because your edge is much thinner but providing now if you see I obviously am using this part of the of the edge so I need to raise the burr here so if I take my diamond card and I raise the burr so all I have to do where are we in camera <laughs> all I have to do is to give it a, a quick go with the diamond card and that will raise the burr here and then that will give me a nice cut to finish. You'd have to take my word for it. Now I'm not going to do any sanding because obviously um, we don't want to spend a long time on this. I want to get down to the other part. So essentially we've hollowed and what I would do now is to sand to um, four or six hundred grit if I wasn't using Yorkshire grit. If I was using Yorkshire grit I would sand up to 240 stroke 320 then sanding sealer Yorkshire grit and my wax of choice happens to be Hampshire Sheen and if I wasn't using Yorkshire grit I would again sand to a minimum of 400 possibly 600 um, then apply one or two coats of thinned pre-thinned sanding sealer and then apply Hampshire Sheen. So that's, that's the method I use 95% of the time. So we've got essentially the bowl done. Now what we have to do is to reshape the, the bowl to the shape we want. So I'll stay on the overhead cam for this. And again, checking everything is clear. It doesn't hurt to tighten up. Now this, this is something that I use uh, 
do on a regular basis. It's not absolutely essential, but when you can have extra support, in my opinion, take advantage of it. So what I do, I put my live center in there. This happens to be a one way with no point on it. And then merely grab a tennis ball and feed that in. No great pressure, but what that does is just give you that little bit of support when you're working your way down the goblet. And you can actually keep that. Well, <laughs> my problem last time was I took it away and I didn't check the speed of the lathe and that's why it broke. This wood, again, not an excuse. Chestnut, it, it's, it's, this is very dry. It's quite a wide grain wood. It's nice to turn, but it's a bit, I don't know, it's a bit dusty, I suppose is the word to use. So what we want to do now is to start working on the shape. So I want to get rid of this wood here, just using the wing of the tool. If you haven't got a half inch spindle gouge, a 3 a three eighths bowl gouge is absolutely fine. And I'll prove the point now. Ooh. 3 8 spindle gouge, it's obviously got a 50 degree, I've got a 50 degree on here where I would have 45 on my spindle gouge, on the ordinary spindle gouge. But a bowl gouge is more than capable of doing the same work I just tend to use my half inch um, spindle gauge. For hogging wood, you can use your 3 8 spindle gauge, uh, 3 8 bowl gauge for any problems at all. Now we've got to sort of start looking at the, the shape that we want. And what I want to do now is to bring, bring this around. Like so. Get rid of the excess wood. And we're starting to get the sort of a shape that I'm looking for. Sort of nice contours, bearing in mind I've done no sanding. The inside would be finished now and I'd be working on this. Get rid of more wood. Now already I've formed an egg cup and that's if Joseph is still here he asked me to do an egg cup because they've got a very short stem. <laughs> I think he's being sarcastic, I might be wrong but okay now I'll change to my 3.8 spindle gouge because that this is the 45 degree it allows me to get in a little bit more is that too bright no that's okay let me see what i'm doing now um it allows me to get in a little bit better without fouling Okay, so that's about as thin as I want to go as far as that part of it is concerned. So now I'm going to start working, moving wood. Bear in mind, all this wood here is going to be gone till we get to the foot. Now, when we get to this level, part of the, of the turning, you make a decision on what bits of detail you're going to do, etc. Now, I always quite like a little fillet there like that, but that's a bit clunky. So, I can either use my 3.8 spindle gouge. And what I want to do is to undercut that a bit and go in there. Now you can see what's going to happen. If I want to go in there at 90 degrees, I'm going to be fouling here. I'm going to be fouling the piece. So 
on the other end of this tool, which is a Simon Hope double-ended tool, I have grown the 30 degree bevel on my what I call a detail gauge and that gives me an awful lot of access so I can go in there and just bring that around and then what I can do here is tidy this up it works very similar to a skew chisel and if I stop the lathe you can see here that when I'm going down there like this I'm almost touching this well if I had the 45 degree as you can see I would be fouling on this detail there but the 30 degree allows me an awful lot of access if you like so I'm just going to just move that little bit of wood there and make a nice crisp transition there now I quite like the look of that, that's fair enough. So what I need to do now, this is basically, or nearly, where we were last time. Just a little bit further down and we'll see if we can keep it in one piece this time. So again, handle fairly low. I'm going to be using uh, the first third from the nose of that to get rid of a lot of stock. And moving my body, not my hands, swinging my body. And what I'm actually doing when I'm doing this, I'm also making that sort of design that I'll be looking for on the foot, because I do prefer a concave design. So what I'm going to do is get to the first part of the stem, and then I'll stop and ask if there are any questions. Now you can use the wing of your spindle gouge, or gold gouge if you're using it, to get down to the stem. You could use whatever, whatever method you like. Now, this is where it becomes crucial, where you've got to decide, right, how am I going to transition from this detail into... Pick up the cut and get a nice straighten out, come along. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. Could come in a little bit more there. Just light cuts just to get a nice transition and that, that's pretty good he says being big headed I don't mean that it, 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 it looks quite nice it could actually go in a little bit more now for that I'll use the 3 8 spindle gouge because that gives me a little bit more control and I want to pick the cut up now if I did mess this up a little bit here it doesn't matter because I can go back and I can tidy it up all I'm trying to do is get a bit of a, a deeper curve there for the transition. Yeah, I prefer that. So we're, we're going to stick with that. So this now is going to form the stem. Now this, this is where you have to decide where your diameter of your stem is going to come in, how you're going to play, are you going to have a little taper going down to the, um, down to the base, what shape of, the, of base do you want? Now, to actually, don't worry about this here. I'm not, not worried about the finish or anything here. I'm just on about the, I'm, I'm worried about the technique that I use. It's not the only technique, obviously. Um, so what I, you can see how dry this wood is, uh, wood is and it's very wide. So it, I'm not gonna go too thin on the stem. Um, I've got nothing to prove here. Yes, I have. No, um, so this is gonna be the diameter of the stem. So if we just take, let's put me goggles on and get rid of that. If we, if we take a bit more wood away, now this, this is going to be our benchmark, this here. Now I haven't got a problem with having the stem a little bit fatter at the top, going into a little bit thinner and then just joining up with the foot. It's, a, it's what you feel is aesthetically pleasing because after all said and done you're turning you're turning for you not for anybody else at this stage if someone gives you a commission and they want a certain design then you have to comply you may not even you may not like it but you're not paying for it okay so what I would do now under normal circumstances I would sand this area 
uh, and here and the bowl. So the bowl would be sanded, the fillet would be sanded and this part would be sanded as well. Um, I used to put a finish and everything else on but I don't think that's necessary. As long as you sand it and get the, the bulk of the pressure work done if you like that's okay. You can seal it if you wish but it's not really necessary because don't forget we have this for support. So I'm just going to stop there for a minute and see if anybody has any questions. If I can operate this, if there's anybody left, of course. Okay. Um, hello to everybody that I missed, and thanks for those that came back after I disappeared. Um, let's just put this down here a bit. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm using my, um, as I keep saying to everybody, I'm using my mouse pad and I, uh, on the laptop, and I really don't like that at all. Hi Maggie, how are you? Sorry I missed you. I was deep in turning. Right, when doing pull cuts using the clock face as a reference, what direction is the flute facing? Um, it's approximately... The flute is facing um, at approximately 10 o'clock. 10, 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, sorry, 2 o'clock with open. Oh, let me show you. Depends which, which part of the clock face you're looking at, I suppose. Um, right, when I, it is facing uh, sort of seven o'clock, two o'clock, yeah, <laughs> if that's any help, that's sort of an angle. Hopefully that's helped you. How do you stop it going too thin? Well, that's something that's been bugging me for many, many years, right, <laughs> right escape. Um, a lot of it, on a small bowl like this, it is uh, basically stop feel it with your fingers you can use it use a caliper if you wish um, but on on goblets I don't normally bother with calipers it's normally just just feel it with your fingers and um, you have a fair idea hi Phil how are you Graham light how are you Graham just logged in this looks really good does it really you've been watching some terrible stuff then if this is good <laughs> we had some technical hitches to begin with um, yeah, basically, with a, with a, if you're going very thin, uh, which I most probably will do, I might do a sort of a mini series of live events on goblets, different, you know, different designs and so on. Not that I'm an artist, but um, and there are several ways of uh, making the job easier, of maintaining a even wall, wall thickness down through the goblet. Mainly when you're doing goblets. Right, goblets are fine until I sand them, then the stem just breaks. Um, that's a very good question from Roy to Skate. Well, if I can say this to you, when, when you're turning the goblet, even if it hasn't got a long stem, do it in sections. Do the sanding, sand the bowl, and bring up some form of support from your tailstock if you can. I mean, even a live centre with a little piece of rubber on the end on the point so you don't mark the inside of the bowl and bring that in and just put light pressure on and it's it's then like turning a solid spindle between centres because you've got support at the back and support at the front. Obviously the longer the stem gets then less pressure but there's also another method which I'll show in a future video where you're not actually pressing into the headstock you set up a system where you're actually pulling so in actual fact you're pulling that way so the forces are not on the stem you're pulling it away but my advice always is to sand as you go um, and until you get to the to the base and then sand, sand that in sections and then your sealer and your finishes and what have you depends how thin your stem is as well Archie me hi Mike thank you for doing these live streams as a beginner I'm learning a lot from you thank you I hope you did you tune in last week when I can actually teach goblets to fly. I'm thinking of starting a goblet flying school, actually. Um, <laughs> Hello, Paul, again. How are you? How are you, mate? Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I had a bit of a problem earlier. Mike, isn't it the case that t uh, times light cuts, light touch sanding, let your tools do the work for you? Couldn't agree more, Graham. Light touch with your tools, obviously, and make sure they are as sharp as you can get them if at any time during turning you feel hmm, does that need sharpening if you're thinking it it needs sharpening that's why i was advocate to have your 
uh, sharpening station or the method you use to sharp, literally a turn and a maximum of a step away. If it's more than that, you are less likely to sharpen as often as you need to. And uh, that's just my opinion, of course. And indeed with sanding as well, a light touch, because you, you really and truly, if you're, if you're, you should sand a goblet that's got a thin stem with the same pressure as you would a box or a bowl to, to a certain extent. You don't need massive pressure. You've got to let the sandpaper, the abrasive, do its work. Um, and that's a completely different ball game when you're talking of sanding. That is a, a skill and a mindset in its own. And I'll just say very briefly, the biggest problem with the newer turner uh, is that they use um, inconsistent pressures per grit. And they will use a heavier pressure on the coarser grits, which obviously cause deeper scratches. And then as they get to a finer grit, psychologically, you're not putting so much pressure on. So you're not going to get rid of those marks because all, all the grits do is get rid of the marks that were caused by the coarser grit before. But that's a subject for another another video. Um, in fact, I, I and many have got several on, the, on that topic. You definitely get one of those shirts. What, what are these shirts? <laughs> no. Um, flying, uh, fly, yes, fly, yes, it's in the works. Let's put it that way. That's out the way. John Dempsey. Uh, Jerry Dempsey, hi, how are you? Um, I'm in Bedfordshire, um, which is north of London. If you're from the UK, you'd know that. Leisure, how are you? Oh, you mean, yes. Um, we, we'll see how that goes, Leisure. Um, good afternoon, Mick, Mickle Strachan. How are you, sir? Are you well? Nice to see you. <laughs> Mike Lang, can't think of another YouTube turner that is so articulate and clear in their word. <laughs> you want to hear me after I've had a few beers. Uh, <laughs> It's very nice of you, Mr. Lane. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're obviously very easily pleased, my friend. Um, hi, Buster. How are you? Nice to see you. Hello, Gordon. Welcome. Turn to fill Goblin into a ball. Good man, right, right escape. Um, yeah, that's the good thing about wood turning. Um, if you mess up on one thing, you can. they call it a design change. Had to disappear for a minute. Is it still? Yes, it is. It is, Martin. It's still in one piece, mate. And well, you've only got an inch down the stem. <laughs> oh dear. I've got to. Excuse me a second. I've got to increase my uh, the typings. Whoops. No, you can't do it with your mouse. Your mouse is not connected. Ah, that's better. I can see what people are saying there. Eh? Terrible when you get old. Your eyesight goes. Well, everything goes. And I gotta stick that and move that across there. That's it. Lovely. Um Hamel, hi Mike. Nice goblin, thank you. Nice goblin, yes. I I've paid in goblins this morning, funny. And a bit late, but I can learn a lot from Thank you. Greetings. Thank you for coming. Buster West, hello Buster. And Ulton Moore Ultan Moore, nice to see you and thanks for coming. Leisure, you're behind the times. Martin's been and gone and come back again. Mike's not getting a feed, aren't I? Am I not getting a feed? I think I am. Hashim Tawalib. Hi, Mike. Thanks for the great content you provide. Greetings from Saudi. Hashim, welcome. Thanks very much for your comments. Appreciate it. I meant no offence for the production assistant remark. <laughs> None taken, Jess. <laughs> I've been trying to get a production assistant for years. Please don't... Uh, any, anything, any comments like that. I, I'm a sarcastic person. Uh, I appreciate banter. Good afternoon, Miss T. How are you? Hello, hello, Chris. Yet again, how are you? Sorry about earlier. Oh, you were telling him off for being rude. Leisure. No, I, I'm big enough and ugly enough to fight my own battles, but thank you. Um, no, I totally agree. But w what it is, uh, actually the first production, not the turning, but the production went out without a hitch. Um, shall I tell you something, people? I've got to be honest with you. I can't, I can't lie to you. The reason it kept cutting out was, in my haste to set up, I was relying on the... Wi-Fi signal from my cottage, which is about a hundred feet from my garage, and this is why I've got a separate internet connection in here. And I'd forgotten to plug in the Ethernet cable into the laptop. So there we are. I've been honest with you. It was my fault that I couldn't get a stream because, unfortunately, it kept cutting out. Okay, now you know. 
Right. Um, <laughs> no, no, keep it, keep it clean. Okay. <clears throat> Just coming from my workshop, turning it another tweed pot. Nice one. Well done, T. Mike, you could have gotten away with it. I could have, yeah, but no, I've got to be honest because it's it. I think honesty is the best policy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, right what I'm going to do uh, there are no more questions there were a few questions what I'll do now is attempt to carry on down the stem until uh, I get to the foot and then we'll have a little chat about different designs of foot hang on Graham I just come in from a workshop fuming I spent three hours turning the bowl in the into the largest napkin ring in the world well Graham uh, welcome you must get one of these uh, T-shirts, Wood Turner's T-shirts, that you all know about. Yes, Jerry, I am very familiar with Phil Anderson's turning. He's a very talented guy. He takes on some really, really good stuff. Yeah, he's a lovely, good channel, lovely guy as well. Oh, I thought you'd finish with an inch-long stem to be... Oh, I shall um, move the camera, Martin, to show you that uh, it's not an inch. It's about... I'll, I'll tell you how long it is. Martin Saber Smith has been a little bit. Uh, it's actually an inch and a half, mate. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's carry on. So again, I can't say enough. Not much pressure here at all. Uh, this is fairly stable at the moment. But what will happen is, as you get longer, maybe not this length, you could do that and actually twist the bowl with the base staying the same, which you don't want because it'll break. And I keep saying this wood is not ideal because it's very wide grained. But that's no, no excuse for a man of my calibre. <laughs> right, OK, so we're now going to turn the stem. I'll carry on turning the stem. Um, and as I said, I'm not going to do any sanding or finishing on this, but you would, you would at least sand this portion and then carry on down. So remove wood. Again, handle though to start with. Pick up the cut and just go towards the centre. Slowing up always when you go to the middle because the wood is turning slower. Now I'm turning at about 1200, maybe 1300 revs. I would normally turn something like this about 15, 16, sometimes even 2000 revs. But it's not necessary. It just gives a finer cut and you can move a bit quicker. But if you turn at about 1200 revs, 1000 revs, providing you do a nice steady cut, you have no problems with finish. So again, now we've gone another half an inch, three quarters of an inch. So the idea here now is to just remove this wood and to blend this piece into the same diameter as the, just nice and, nice and gently, using the wing of the tool. just blending now very light cuts and that is sufficient you don't have to blend anymore because don't forget you're going to be sanding it and even on that finish there there if, if I stop it I keep hitting the camera um, it's quite a nice finish there you you could start start sanding at 180 240 um, and just to take any little imperfections out that you want so again, taking wood away, bearing in mind that we're going to be cutting, obviously, we're going to be parting off. So I would guess, let's just say we start to, let's move that along here a bit. I'm going to take this off again, it keeps on getting involved. Okay, so let's just say we're going to part off here. Okay, so that's where we're going to be parting off. So that's where the base is going to start. Now, I can, yeah, I can do it that way. 
it surprises me how many bases on goblets um, are convex. In other words, they're sort of rounded over. Um, it works on something like a, a chalice, in my opinion, something stocky and, and, and chunky. But on anything that's got a th relatively thin stem, it doesn't work for me. It looks clumpy. Um, there are two or three things to consider when you get down to this level, if I ever, excuse me, if I ever get down there, of course. Um, that's for Martin Saban Smith's sake. Um, if I get down there, then what I'll be looking at is a nice sweeping curve, a convex, a concave curve going from the base and just melding in nicely with the stem. That's just me. Now, this stem, I would guess, would go to somewhere about there. Maybe a bit further. I don't know. I'll see when it's through. Stop a lot and look and see if you're happy, if you're happy with the way it looks and its proportions. The other thing to, is to consider is the diameter of the foot compared to that of the bowl. I like to have the base a very maximum the same diameter as the bowl diameter. If it's any bigger, it starts to look very bottom heavy. Likewise, if you have the diameter of the foot too narrow, it starts to look top heavy. But if you have it about the same, slightly less is better in my view than slightly bigger, but only ever so slightly. And then I think you get a fairly good balance. Okay, enough talking. So we'll carry on again now and just go down to where I think I'm going to start thinking about the... No, I got up to 1,350 30, rows. Again, just taking wood away. nice easy cuts. Now we're a bit fat there so we need to come down a bit. Just small, small cuts. Yeah, that's good. Now I think you can see that already, if you like, um, I could blend that foot into this goblet, make it slightly narrower than it is and you've got a finished goblet. So the it's not kudos as such but obviously turning a long stem goblet takes a little bit more time and a little a little bit more concentration but you can produce really nice little goblets at that sort of size and that is only six inches so you know it doesn't have to be any longer than that really Especially, again, I got asked last time a lot about um, using them for drinking liquids, wine, etc. out of. I have never actually produced a goblet for use. You can get some very good uh, coatings, uh, which are water resistant or liquid resistant. Um, I think, what, what, what was one of them? Um, plastic coat, not sorry, Rustin's plastic coat. That is a very, Chris Pooley, who does a lot for use, um, uses that and it is a very good product. So if you want to make a goblet or a couple of goblets for use, then have a look at Rustin's Plastic Coat. I, I haven't personally used it, but I'm sure if Chris recommends it, it's good. So we'll just carry on again now, going a bit further down. Another thing, you can see a little ridge there because I, I, I stopped the cut, I didn't position myself properly. So if I take a light cut, I'm not going to stop here, but as you can see, if you do one continuous cut, you get a nice smooth finish. Now again, this is where things went wrong last time. 
what I tend to do, um, I'm okay here because I'm between centers, but oh, here we are, look, there's, there's a thing to show you. Well, I mentioned about not having too much pressure on the end here. If, if I hold this, you can see that there's already flexing in here. Now, <laughs> what I meant to do, I'll make sure the lathe is turned down, I'll take this away and I just want to show you that even on a short stem goblet you've got that movement and this is as I say a uh, a wide grained wood so if I turn it on and just turn it nice and slowly um, you can already see the more I turn it up it's not too bad now actually but the point I'm making is that the other one, I was starting at 1600 revs, it was slightly off centre and what happened was it just spun and spun and spun and it just decided I've had enough of this, I'm going flying. So always be mindful, uh, he says, after not doing it himself, uh, to make sure your lathe is either switched, um, the, the speed is down to zero or if you've got a pulley system, it's on the lowest speed for when you turn it on because you can have some shocks, believe me. And if you've got a big bowl on there, now that isn't running through now. So I'll take it out and very gently bring it up. And that's still not right. So take it off again and try again. No, we're there. Only a very slight amount of pressure just to give that little bit of um, support because if you start putting too much pressure on this now it's going to start to whip and you don't want that and that's even on a short stem goblet okay so you can see it's already moving a bit now but I'm not bothered about that because it's got the support from the um, from the tailstock so again up to 1200 revs and take away more And now we can start this nice and easy. You see on this bit here, I uh, said where it started going a bit wrong um, last time, is I quite often use a skew chisel. Uh, and this isn't for kudos and for how clever am I. It's because, it's not very good with this one actually, it's because you've got to have... It, it just leaves a lovely finish and it, it you can be put a bit more speed on that um, you could you, you can be very very delicate So you'll notice I'm using a, um, a radius skew, which I prefer, and because I'm a chicken. No, I just find it more forgiving, and uh, I am a lot more confident using it. The thing is, when you're doing a very long stem, it, 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 you just have to take your time. You're not in a rush, you're not in a competition, and just do what you feel happy doing. A little bit there. A little tiny ridge there. Yeah, that's good enough. So, there is that way of doing it as well. And if you're going to try something like that, I mean, I was already doing 1,000 revs there, and you can see it's a, ni a nice finish, a nice finish. So you don't have to go at breakneck speed. And uh, But you, just as well, you can use the wing of your tool. There's no problem with that at all. But it's, it's sometimes nice to experiment with different methods of doing things. On a piece of wood, that doesn't really matter. Just bring it down. We'll 
take a bit more off here I think I'll just have it a little bit longer let's move the rest along make sure everything's clear now you can see now it's even more now where it's moving to the base from the base Okay, so take a bit more wood off here. Now I'm already starting to look at the curve I'm getting and how that is going to transition into the stem. Now you could, there, I mean there are loads of possibilities. No, you could use that as a little little detail and then have a yeah you could do see so what you could do then if you wanted to uh, this little piece here you could just turn that into the stem almost just a little round over Make the stem and just blend that in there light light cuts just blend that in and then you'd, you'd sand that to be absolutely perfect okay so there's there's a little detail there if you like so you can start taking more wood away bit more speed and then that that would be your your target so what you want to do is to blend into that I'm not saying we're going to keep it there but let's just see what happens there okay so that is an option as well. I'm not happy with that. Uh. That's better. Okay, so you can actually leave it there. And you part off here. So it's quite a, uh, it's not a, a fine goblet, but you can see there, there's a slight taper from the base of the fillet down, and then you've got it transitioning into there. Now, I've done a few like that before. Of course, you would sand it and finish now. So what would happen is that you've sanded the whole piece. The next stage would be to put sanding sealer on, Yorkshire grit if you wish, and then the wax of choice. As I say, in my case, it's Hampshire Sheen. Um, so that is really, I mean, I don't know how long we've been going, an hour and a, a bit, and with all the, that's an hour from start to finish, um, and talking in between. So I'll just stop now for a minute and see if you have any questions. Fucking fiddling with it. Excuse me. What's the matter, Mr. BB turning? Oh, I see you're a bit worried about me going down. <laughs> Sorry, I took that the wrong way there for a minute. Right. Um, I love that comment. Stop fecking fiddling with it. <laughs> oh, well. Quick while you're ahead. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thank, uh, I, I love it. I, I love all this confidence in me. What I'll say is I can literally say I have turned hundreds of goblets over the years, and I've had quite a few go flying, but the majority stay in one piece, he says. I haven't parted this one off yet. <laughs> BB turning. Yes, I, that's okay, mate. I... I, I this is the problem when you start looking at chat after you've been turning and talking. So um, I know I've asked it once before, while I was turning, the um, lavalier mic, is it okay or does the sound distort? Phil Boulder, yes, it's still in one piece, mate. Sorry about that. Bill Kennedy, hello from Michigan. 
Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we do, Maggie. You're right there. <laughs> Nothing happened. I'm sorry, Leisure. Everything's okay. Thank you, Buster. Very nice of you to say so. Confidence comes with practice. It does. Um, and in actual fact, when you do get something go wrong, it doesn't mean quite as much. Um, is there a particular type of wood that you find best for, tab for tablets? Um, of, sorry, not sure what you mean, Denise. Oh, thanks. That's good. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, BB. I agree. Uh, lovely. Thank you, Jerry. What do you recommend for goblets? Uh, and would you advise to stay away from? Um, <laughs> uh, that is a a very, very good question, actually. Um, I don't think you can say stay away from anything, really, because uh, wood uh, wood side, it's best to have a close grain wood. Um, if you're turning a limb... Uh, try and get it between centres where it's off. The, the pith isn't running down the centre, because if there's going to be any movement cracking, it's going to be down the pith. So just slightly off, get the pith slightly off to one side on both sides. So you're turning it a little bit sort of askew, but then the pith won't run right down the stem. And wide grain woods for big goblet, long goblets and delicate goblets, I would not uh, recommend. Woods like yew, ash any of the exotics, uh, beech, all great for this type of turning because they, and, and sycamore as well because they've all got nice tight grains and they're a joy to turn. Do you have a mic on that shirt? So. <laughs> got the bug turn goblets from watching Mr. Walt. Thank you Buster, that's good. Um, I, I'm by no means a master at goblets, believe me. I, I know people say that I am, I am not. But I, I know what I like is the old cliche. Um, it's my method of turning. A lot of people have got different ways of doing it. Um, I found that worked for me. Open cross hatch base. Yes, I'm sure it does, Maggie. Um, it won't be happening in my workshop anytime soon. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you, uh, Steve. I haven't parted it off yet, Steve. And I haven't quite finished. I've got to make the uh, stem a bit longer yet. This is just a, a, an option, if you like. It's got to go down a bit further. But um, just to keep you all on your edge of your seats. No, it's... Um, yeah, red oak, I'm sure. A any Oak is great. Um, I, I forgot to mention that. Oak is good as well. Um, the, any, any hardwood is ideal. Um, this chestnut, it, it, it's okay, it's quite a plain wood, but it is very open poured, open grained, you know. It will be Jennifer, welcome, thank you for coming. Hey, the flaming term, uh, turning, I'll still call you the Goblet King. Well, that's fine, that's very kind of you. The Flying Goblet King, yes, uh, we're going to open up, as I said earlier on, we're going to open up a, um, a pilot school for goblets, flying goblets. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> um, I, I think, honestly, the thing with goblets is that, um, I mean, I love turning bowls. No, nothing gives me more pleasure, to be honest with you, than turning a wet bowl because, you, you know, the, the wonderful streams, streamers you get. Well, when you're turning correctly, the wonderful streamers you get. But there's just something about goblets. Uh, the off-centre goblets. So, oh, by the way, I will be doing a, a video. I know I've got a couple up on, on YouTube. I will be doing a live um, stream on um, off-centre turning goblets as well. Um, the reason for that is, again, I have a different method of doing it to other people. It works for me. Um, it's, it, it, it's a good skill builder, believe me. Um, and make sure you have a couple of changes of pants in your, in your garage as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, Max, thank you. I'm pleased to hear it. Thank you. I'm going to disappear again. I'll be back to see the finished result. OK, Phil. Yeah, you. see you soon, mate. <clears throat> Martin is great at turning goblets. We turned one together some years ago, actually, and uh, he did the lion's share of it. I wouldn't have to tease him. Martin's more than capable of turning a goblet. Not as good as mine, but... <laughs> oh, you're buying the 1628, the Axie one. Yeah, great. Uh, that, that's a, a good lathe, really good lathe. Derek Frank, sorry to say my guy cheat. I turn the bowl separate, then stem and glue. Hey, it doesn't matter. That, that's another thing that might be a subject of three-piece goblet, um, and a meant three-piece goblet, Derek, Derek Frank. Yeah, three-piece goblets are great. It's a good way of using up different woods as well. And you can get nice contrasts. How thick is the stem? Excuse me, I've got to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, I should think the stem's about four mil, something like that, Paul Lockwood. Hang on, I've got caught in me wires here. Ah, hang on, we'll just change the camera. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Here we go. Right, so... Right, the stem on this one at the top is seven and a half mil. It's about seven mil, yeah, it's about seven mil at the top, seven and a half mil uh, down to here. But I would sand that normally. Um, so you, you take a mil or so, maybe half a mil off or so. So yeah, it's about seven, seven mil. It's not thin stem at all, but it's um, thin enough for this exercise, I think. <laughs> Wash your hands, Mike. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Best regards from Russia. Hello from Russia to Russia. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate it. That's good. Yeah, I always wear my face mask um, when I'm turning. Uh, in actual fact, in Dewey, 95% um, of the time I will wear the respirator. I've, I've actually had that for nearly all the eight years that I've been turning and I've worn it. I wear it all the time. It's a bit more, it's a bit more difficult when you're demonstrating. I just wear a, um, a UVX face shield. Uh, I don't like wearing glasses uh, purely in because I've got glasses on so I don't need more glasses on top of them. Do I think, uh, Peter Fuller, do I think there'll be any shows this year? Um, to be honest with you, I, th I think the one that's got the most uh, chance of being on is Harrogate, because that's November, I think. Um, but the ones that, I mean, Maker Central, for example, could, could have to be put back again. I don't see it happening in August. It might do. I mean, you know, God willing, it will do. But I don't think so. I think everything's got to take at least a rain check to sort of September, October time. Michael McGowan, hello from Victoria, BC, Canada. Oh, thank you very much, Michael, from British Columbia. Thank you. Nice and welcome. Uh, it's a personal opinion on the shows. Do you think Chrome Tools set is a product for turning tools? Is a product for turning tools? Uh, Mike, do you think Chrome Tools set, all oh, right, is, is a product for turning tools? Um, I think what you're trying to say, are Chrome good? Well, yes, they are good. I mean, there are very, uh, Robert Sorby, Henry Taylor, um, to name but a few. I use um, Simon Hope's tools, which are basically Chrome Cryo tools. Uh, yeah, and they're brilliant. If you buy a set of tools, I personally wouldn't buy a set of tools, but that's just me, because I don't think you need all those tools. Um, but then having said that, if you're starting out, um, the best thing to do is to either ring up a reputed supplier and ask for advice or go to your wood turning club or go to a wood turning, uh, talk to a wood turning friend and they'll give you advice. But he, I mean the box sets are all, you can get good, you can get cheap. Um, middle of the road is good to start with. How's lockdown? It's rubbish in Wales. Oh, Dewey, it's uh, not too bad here, but I mean at the end of the day it's, um, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. I'm not happy with uh, the lockdown being eased in England at the moment, but there you go. Jess Lyles. Yeah, the home tools are brilliant. They are good. Slaves of the Lave. I've had a goblet go bang on me last week. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> Took the sidewall out too thin. Lucky I had my mask. Exactly. Uh, always keep your mask on. It always amazes me when people turn pens regularly they, they they very rarely wear a mask but i mean a pen could be traveling at 3000 rpm and if that comes off it'd be like a bullet ah oh dear <coughs> yeah okay well what i'm going to do is um i'll carry on with this now and um oh by the way uh, this is not a plug i promise you i'd just like to thank everybody for the uh contributions they made to the channel on my last live stream it was very much appreciated Thank you. And I'm not saying that, that I want people to do it today. All right. I'm just thanking everybody that's here that was there and did, did that. Okay. Uh, shield on. I tell you what, actually, I'm going to put my respirator on and I'm going to talk while well, I'm turning this last bit of the, uh, last bit of the stem. And, um, afterwards, tell me if you can hear me talking through it. It'd be interesting. Well, interesting for me. Okay. 
So, put the respirator on. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is just take this down a little bit more. You can see already there is quite a bit of vibration there. So, okay. So all I'm going to do there is take this down. Nice easy cuts. And I think we'll call it a day there. I think we'll just go go to this area, take this down a bit further. And I'm just going to do a straight... Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Sorry, take this off for a minute. Yeah, um, going about the, the sort of undercut, the, the convex cut, the concave cut that I like on the bowls, you can imagine it going this way, where it's con uh, convex, and I just, on a, on a goblet that's nature, I just personally feel that makes it look very clumpy, as I do the flat bases. I just think a nice gentle curve going in and melding nicely with the stem has a better overall.
Right, have we got sound now? We got yeah, we got sound now. Right. <laughs> the sound isn't very good, I'm afraid, but uh, I've got everything enabled now. So I've got <laughs> my uh, cameras, the webcams, and the laptop. Sorry, it could be quite scratchy. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, I understand the sound is back. You had you had vision. I don't know what happened there. I'll have to check out this. Um, thanks for saying about the battery, but it is a USB mic, and it, it it's pretty good <laughs> when it works. No, I, I, first time I've used it today. <laughs> Mike, stop talking. I don't think so, Maggie. <laughs> Use it more than once while doing a recording. Yeah, I know. It, it's terrible. Never mind. I mean, it's all part of... Uh, Rewind. Uh, <laughs> basically, um, well, I'm sure you you saw the video anyway. Uh, you saw the actual. You just didn't have my wonderful voice. I'm just going to take a quick drink. Um, thank you to the guys or to the to the persons that have uh, contributed. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Has anybody got any questions? Now you can hear me. Steve's the lady. The cobbler is beautiful. My sound's back. Good. As for your unruly behaviour in the comments box. <laughs> Great banner though. Um, if there weren't any unruly comments, um, slave to the lathe, I'd be quite upset. Jerry Dempsey, so embarrassed? No. That's one thing I don't get is embarrassed. I'm sure I'm too old to get embarrassed. Things happen. Things happen. And uh, when they do, you've just got to make the best of it. Did you miss anything? Mike Lane, no, no, no. Not, not, not of any, nothing of any interest. Can I recap on the dimensions? Yes, of course I can, Paul Lockwood. Uh, the goblet is eight inches long, uh, just, just over. The, um, the stem is just on five inches long. And the base is the same dimension as the, uh, the bowl of the goblet and the stem in an unsanded don't forget this is not sanded uh, or finished the stem up here is just on just over seven mil working down to there to about eight and a half mil but those dimensions obviously would reduce when you sand it okay looks like i'm drinking mess now diet coke colin french look Oh, it's got a blue tinge to it. I wonder where that's coming from. <laughs> that's coming from the meth bottle. <coughs> oh, always. Always turn, always, the bottom of the goblet, I didn't do it today. Um, the bottom of the goblet here is always sanded. After I got rid of the nib, I'll sand the nib off. And I tend to put my Jacob's chuck into the um, headstock and sand that way. Or you can hand sand. Uh, you know, with a, a drill, like a power sand with a drill, but I'd like to do it on the lathe. And I, I put my uh, my grits in, various grits, and I, the bottom is finished to the same level as the rest of the goblet. And in this case, it is. It hasn't been touched. <laughs> but I always finish off the bottom. Thank you, Jerry. It's very kind of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I wouldn't say it's a fine goblet, but it is, it is a goblet. Um, and it's a one-piece goblet, which is very rare beast indeed <laughs> it is in my workshop anyway over the last few days we're turning across other brands of coke are available <laughs> yes okay oh thank you very much leisure you're a star that's very very kind of you thank you very much indeed hello mr senior how are you sir i didn't use any finishing today so there was uh you know but i finished the goblet that was the main thing nice goblet uh, martin took over the commentary a few bucks <laughs> Good old Martin. Thank you, Mr. Ma Simon Smith. I knew I could rely on him. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, dr drill press is great as well. Um, I have a long walk. Nigel, I've missed this. Been teaching my wife how to turn. I have a long walk, or Nigel, as I know you were called now. Yeah, I'm, I've got a, 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 a lavalier Mac a mic working. Uh, my other two wouldn't work, and this is a USB one, but it did give up the ghost. Now I might have pulled out because it is wired. I'll have to check on that when I uh, when I have a look. Hello Matt, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't see you arriving. Do we have a tape up your goblet bowl to the tennis ball and lie centre then apply out? Yes, 
I have old thin goblets, I do that, Matt. That's a very good point. Um, I did mention it at one stage of the turning. I will go through that method as well. It is very good, especially on thin, longer stem goblets where you're actually pulling away from the headstock so that you're relieving any pressure on the stem. Great point, Matt. And yes, um, I use it and I will show how I use it in the future. Uh, slave to leave, there's a dollar sign on the track. Well, leisure, please. <laughs> That's very kind, thank you very much. Um, slave to leave, at the bottom there's a dollar, there should be a dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window. Uh, if you wish to click that, um, then you can make a donation that way. That's very kind of you, thank you for thinking of doing so. Yeah, it's all right, Leisure, I'm only kidding. You could be my financial advisor, don't you worry. <laughs> financial director. Huey Kersbergen, thank you very much indeed. You are an absolute star. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Much, uh, sorry, we've missed the demo. Well done. It's all right, Michael. Um, yeah, earlier the transmission was non existent, Michael Wright. <laughs> Um, I had some technical issues and in fact I had a technical issue in the middle of this, the sound went, but never mind, we boldly carry on. Uh, oh, slave to the lay, thank you. Um, it's It's been really enjoyable again, I really do enjoy these live streams where you could interact with people. My Joyce, uh, do I need two stems? Hope so, because I just ordered another. Yeah, two stems are fine, you have a drive stem and a stem centre. And uh, as I say, they are excellent. I did have a catch, on, not on purpose, but it doesn't matter. When you've got the stems on, you'll just slip, slip their moorings. Matt, you're very kind. Thank you so much. Um, and it slips the, it slips the centers, uh, as you saw in the video, if you are watching earlier on. And for the newer turner, they're brilliant because um, the catch is, is reduced by a lot. Thank you, Lee. That's very kind of you. That's it. <laughs> now you won't DL Wood Art turn in a funnel. Well, you've got to turn a funnel to get the T-shirt, don't forget. Or many of them. Brian, you could never have too many. <laughs> Early had to change jaws and was wondering why I didn't have an extra one. No, DL Wood Art, my pleasure and thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Rock and Wood Woodshop. Yeah, you try that. You'll enjoy it. They're great fun, honestly. They really are. What are the best steps to get, Mick? Best steps? All the steps. Um, thank you, Slave to the Lathe. Appreciate it. Step centres. Um, I've got Robert Sorby. Um, I think Axman's to do the evolution. Um, so there are two sorts. I'm not saying I prefer one to the other. I've only used Robert Sorby. They are superb, as I am sure the Axminster ones are. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Martin Saban Smith. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Not bad, might not bad. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the sound's a bit scratchy now. However, Nigel, looks like it's been a good video. Is it available on YouTube? Yes, it will be. Once it's up, it'll be up. I'll, I'll just leave them up for a while for people to uh, to check out and to sit back and think. Thank God I didn't watch that live. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that's a shame, Matt. That's a shame. Does the clock on the wall have a clear face? What? That one there? No, that's a that's a, an intrinsic colour one. And that one there is not a clock. That one there is a a gift from a very good friend of mine, Paul Lockwood, who was on earlier on. He sorry about that. I've got some motorbike idiot going past it. Um, David Bolt's been using a one-way set, yeah, with, with a pin as small as possible just to get the thing centred. Then when it catches, it just spins. Yeah, very good. Yeah, excellent idea, David Bolt. You could use that as well. Yeah, use the <coughs> use the centre. The only thing with that, it does leave a little little dimple. But you can actually, uh, not a dimple, a little indent, but you can get rid of that by using a bit of mouse pad or something just to protect the um, the inside of your bowl. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't realise the mic had gone. Um, I should have been looking at the the graph on here, the sound sound graph. But never mind. It, it's only the second time I've done it, but uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad for you. Gave you a bit of relief from my boring droning voice. When's the next demo? I'm planning it for next Wednesday stroke Thursday, James. I should imagine Wednesday uh, at around 7.30 again, I would think. Uh, it's very difficult. I do try my hardest not to, as, as everybody does, I think, not, not to conflict and, and to clash with other people. But it, it's virtually impossible. So uh, it is what it is. Thank you, Leisure. I'm looking forward to you coming again, my dear. I'm just going to go off camera a minute. Hang on, I'm going to just put my logo up for a second and keep on talking because I need a vape. <laughs> That's better. Jerry Dempsey, if you think my voice is quite pleasant, you need to get out more. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Vape time. Yeah, vape time it is. I'm going to try uh, my utmost not to vape. You know, there's a little goblet coming up from the bottom here. Hello. Hello, everybody. Mr. Goblet here. Look, I'm in one piece. Yippee. <laughs> you won't be in a minute. You'll, you'll roll off the lathe. Right, if, if has anybody got any questions, I'm like, I sit and talk to you all afternoon. Well, I couldn't, but um, because I got to go and something to eat. But are there any, uh, it was a quick vape, Maggie, yes, indeed. <laughs> I might, I know you've said it, I'm going to just go down here. Oh, yeah. They won't see anything. <laughs> Did you see that puff of smoke? Ah, oh, dear. Right, uh, <laughs> slave to leave, advice please. Yep, fire away, young man. We can see, I know you can, Leisha, I did it on purpose. I blew the smoke, uh, the vape up. Mike, were you talking about the base while silent? Why did you shape it the way you did? Ah, right, good point, Matt. Matt, I didn't realise I wasn't. Um, there are several ways of doing a base. I mean, I, I happen to like that shape where it's concave and it sweeps up into the stem doesn't matter how thick the stem is at the bottom i just like that sometimes i put a little collar on it like you might have seen uh, but I, I just think that is more aesthetically pleasing for a goblet um, i just like the con uh, the concave aspect of it and the majority I, I i'm not a great fan of the uh, base going that way where it's con it's convex or even straight I, I just like that sweep i just think it looks nice coming out of the base into the into the stem that's the sum sum total of my arty farty ability matt <clears throat> favorite brand of lathe tools hammer down woodworking tracy mayfield I currently use Simon Hope Crown Cryo tools and I think they're brilliant. I've tried many different manufacturers and um, a lot of them are as good as each other. And some are better than others. Oh, I'm glad you agree, Matt. They mean both must be doing something wrong. How much money have I spent for doing live streams, camera and so on and more? Huey Kerbison, um, Kerbigan, you can, you can start with your mobile phone and from then on it just gets expensive and expensive depending on what you want I'm running this off a laptop which admittedly I did buy for this because my old laptop wasn't man enough and I had one webcam and I bought another of the same and um, basically that's it and a, a lot of Heath Robinson bits and pieces hanging from the ceiling and articulating arms and everything else um, and a good microphone It's difficult to put a price on it because it depends if you eat I, I got a lot of my stuff on eBay not the laptop but the cameras and everything I got on eBay nice done bloody drop it <laughs> don't drop it 
Hi Dave, D Dave, tell Fee that I won't. It's it's lying on its side, waiting for me to take the nub off. <laughs> Slaves the lathe, I made a, a video of a goblet first part, then it went bang and I lost the footage. But the first half is on my YouTube channel. Do I just write it off and delete or just make another second part? You can make another second part if you wish, Steve. A uh, slave to the lathe. It's up to you. Um, if it's the same wood you're going to be using and you can get to the same shape, then just video from the second part. It's a different blank, but it's going to look a bit silly, isn't it? But then having said that, you could actually say what happened. So it, I say look silly, it's not going to look silly at all. But you, if you've got a different blank, it doesn't matter. Just explain what happened and this is the process you've used. Yeah, Mark, yeah, but Mark, mine is really Heath Robinson. I, 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 someone asked me to show, and I said no. It's literally bits of bits of spare wood I've got with um, bolts through it. <laughs> it's not very pretty, but it works. That's all that matters. No one else sees it. Mike, is, you, is your mic wireless or wired? It's wired, but it's very safely wired. I won't trip over it. I've got it in such a way. Um, I couldn't get... I've got two um, wireless mics, but I couldn't get them to be recognised by the laptop. This is in answer to BB turning. Purely and simply because this laptop has got a headphones-only jack, and I can't reconfigure it to take a microphone. So I had to get a USB um, lavalier mic, which is brilliant. It works very well. I know it cut out, but I think I might have actually stepped on the connection or something but nevertheless it, it works well <coughs> uh, cut wax and my mic have you ever used the glass goblet bits you can buy and just turn the stem and base <laughs> what do you think of them I haven't actually used them but I do like the results uh, but as you know leisure I haven't got a problem turning the bowl or the, or the base it's the stem so um, <laughs> all you've got to do is turn the stem which I can't do. No, yeah, they're, they're brilliant. Yeah, I've seen some really lovely looking pieces using those, um, but I've never used them myself. Of course it is Shay. Sorry, I, my brain isn't working, mate. Sorry, BB turning is Shay. Sorry about that, mate. No, it's all right. It doesn't matter. I know you are, no. I shan't, I shan't forget now. Jerry Dempsey, would you have... Would you love to see love to see you do a big chalice, holy grail thing? Um, yeah, that might be something for the future. Uh, I've done a few chalices. Uh, I did a very long goblet, which is about two and a half foot, I think. Uh, but with a stem about that wide, which amazes me, I could do something like that. And then a little goblet with this went flying. The thing is, I think it was like with everything. <laughs> it's all right, Shay. I, I think uh, not to drone on too much, but whatever you're doing, I. It's best practice, isn't it? If you if you get into a habit of doing something, like last week, because I was doing my first live stream, I wasn't concentrated 100% on my turning, and I turned the lathe on, and it was spinning at like 1,400 revs with an unsupported goblet. Disaster, and, and quite rightly so, but that will teach me now to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So, providing you don't get injured by your mishaps, you can learn from them, and something in the back of your head, hopefully, Although it didn't work with me because I've done that about three or four times, but um, yeah, it, it's it's all a learning curve. I don't think you ever stop learning. You're Christy. All right, slave to the lady. You're Christy. Do I need to change my profile picture? No, it's, I can't see it hardly because um, <laughs> oh, young girl. Sorry, young madam. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Christy, please accept my apologies. I've only got I've only got half a half a screen of chat and very small pictures in there. So, uh, Buster West, thank you so much, much appreciated. So, Christy, I will never forget your name now, Christy. If you should ever darken my doorstep again, young lady. <laughs> mm. I poked it. That's why it broke. Yes, you're right. Um, I did, but I didn't mean to poke it. I meant to grab hold of it, but I didn't. <laughs> You're, like, you're right there, Leisure. It was totally my fault. Bad wood as well. Terrible wood. <laughs> oh, I can't say that because this one stayed together. You lost sound again? Bill Kennedy. Am I having a problem with my sound now? Again. Christy, no problem. I accept your lady. <laughs> oh, young lady. You are a young lady compared to me. 
can somebody say yes or no have you lost the sound sounds good oh that's good thank you cheers Martin Phew. sounds fine thanks Leisure J Jerry you got no sound hmm strange everybody else has nope your sound works well thanks Matt that's okay sounds great to me that's okay thank you okay guys and girls thank you sounds all right well has anybody got any uh hi mike just wanted to thank you for the overview video you did with the robin sorby pro edge you did i bought one last night oh you won't be just you won't be disappointed david holden i assure you it is a wonderful bit of kit um up until i used the robert sorby pro edge i was a, a real advocate for cbn wheels um but after using the pro edge a couple of times at a, sh a show and indeed with my good friend martin down in uh, his workshop in hampshire uh, i was sold on the idea such a small footprint and it is so versatile and it's so easy to use and you can't ask for more than that so let me know what you think of it i'm sure you'll be over the moon with it jerry dempsey i'm live oh you, thanks dave you can hear okay dive Prout, hello good afternoon to you now you've turned a one-piece goblet, what next? Well, Martin, um, I don't know. I, I've got to think, actually, I think I'm going to keep on the goblet theme for a, a, a few of these limes, lime, live streams. Um, I don't want, I mean, this, this has actually gone on longer than I'd expected, two hours. Okay, I'm quite happy to make it two or three hours, but um, at the end of the day, do people want to watch the sanding and the finishing as well? Um, I don't know, but I think the idea most probably if I'm going to turn a long stem goblet is on one video I'll turn it um, and then attempt to show you how I would finish it and what stages I would use to do the finish on. And obviously I've got to do an eccentric off centre goblet because they're brilliant fun they are. Uh, and they do go flying quite often. <laughs> so they're good fun. Okay. Will I colour one, Mike asks Leisure from Cut Sand Wax and Admire. No, I'll leave that to the professionals like Martin Saban Smith, your good self, Stuart Farini, uh, Nick Agar, to mention but a few million people who do colouring. I'd like to make it plain while I've got a few people left. I don't actually know how many people are left on here now. I've got absolutely nothing against colouring. I admire and I am in awe of some of the wonderful stuff that people who colour would achieve. I really do. But, no, segmented bowl neither, Martin. <laughs> um, but I've got a, a great bit of admiration. I just have a terrific passion for natural wood, uh, when you can bring out the, the beauty of natural wood, as indeed most people who colour wood. You will find that they will normally colour, unless your name's Martin Saban Smith, who will colour anything. Um, it, it enhances, it does, if you know what you're doing. But the vast majority of people who don't know what they're doing can actually ruin a lovely piece of wood. So at the end of the day, I think um, it's it, it's a personal thing. I, I enjoy colouring like a child would in a school. You know, you sit there, you know, hand painting is great. You get into a mess and you think you're an artist. But there's a lot more involved in getting the desired effect. And I, to be quite honest with you, I've got a lot to learn about standard turning, ordinary, traditional turning. And uh, I'm not that artistically uh, orientated, so I leave that to the experts. So I have coloured goblets so I did a goblet with glue hot glue funny enough and that, that was great fun and it did turn out rather well actually I always say so myself I do finger <laughs> finger painting um, right so I'm not even going to answer that okay Dave Roth regarding cheaper chisel sets they were a good source of learning to sharpen yeah didn't want to learn how to sharpen on 150 <laughs> no I'll agree I'll agree uh, Dave Rothwell is saying that the cheaper uh, chisels are a good learning tool for sharpening. Because believe me, if you, you, you get the sort of the real bargain basement tools, you will have to sharpen very regularly and you do hone your sharpening skills. A couple of data, I'm going to call BS on the artistic comment. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, I'll call you BS on that as well, Captain Data. I have I haven't got artistic flair in so far as 
colouring and things like that. I just haven't got that in me. I can do it. I can make a splodge. I haven't got artistic flair on this. It's just something that I like that looks good to me. It most probably isn't technically incorrect, but if it looks if it looks good and I'm enjoying it, then it's all good with me. Michael Wright was watching on my phone and went onto my computer. There is a big time lag on audio between the two. Really? Uh, I know there's about an eight second lag but you shouldn't actually experience that lag once things are up and running so whatever whatever platform you're watching on it will catch up it won't catch up to me but it'll be a continuous stream this is what I've been told um, <clears throat> I, I think it is hello what's happened here Oh, we're still on, are we? Good. Um, it's, I think, a wise decision is to look on one device and not have two devices going at the same time. Sometimes it takes a little, little while to catch up the, the audio and the sync. But there is between a six and eight second lag standard on YouTube anyway, so I'm told. Thanks, uh, thanks, Martin from Gentle Turn. Yeah, audio sync is. I honestly think it, it has something to do as well with um, where you are, what your connections like, etc. What the traffic's like in your area, i.e., broadband traffic, whatever. Um, there are a lot of variables. And um... no, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Any, of, uh, believe me, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't being funny about that. I appreciate it, mate. I, I, I thank you for any information. Because quite often I look back uh, through the six to eight second lag. You're lucky. I'm getting up to 40, 40 seconds. Good grief. Martin uh, Sabre Smith is telling me that he gets up to 40 seconds on occasion. But um, I, I'm very lucky then. It, it works at about eight seconds here. Martin uh, is saying perhaps off centre goblet or an eccentric goblet. Yes, I will definitely do one of those in one of my live streams. <laughs> but I think I might prepare a few planks just in case. Um, but yes, that will be something for the future, I think. Matt Harbour, no lag. Excellent, thank you. Um, Buster West, got to go. Buster West, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it, mate. And I hope I see you again soon. Captain Data, you are a natural artist, no lag in Orange Park, Florida. That's excellent, Captain Data, thank you. I'm a natural artist, <laughs> wouldn't go that far. Um, we have a say in, oh, I can't say that on, on, on live telly, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I know what one sort of artist I could be. Have to do an off-centre one, good luck. Wouldn't want to be you. Nah, 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 nah. Off-centre goblets are great fun, they really are. Is some kind of art? <laughs> yeah, uh, Martin, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm some kind of artist. I can't quite categorise what sort of artist you are, but you're an artist. <laughs> oh dear. Christy, I've got some cherry I cut into discs drying out in my workshop. Glad to hear it. See, I remembered your name now, Christy, you see? And you are a girl, or a young lady, shall I say. Once again, Mike, you made a stunning piece. Well, Samuel McElroy is fine. You haven't seen many pieces then, if you think that's stunning. But no, thank you very much. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Okay, guys, I think I've taken enough of your time. I'd like to thank you all very, very much for coming on this unscheduled uh, journey. It's been great. I'll try and sort the same note again. Um, and just to let you know, I'm hoping to do another one on Wednesday evening at 7.30. But I will try and schedule that. Oh, that's good, John. If no one's got any questions specifically um, about this, then I'll let you go. I'll just wait two more minutes and have a quick drag. And if any more questions come up, I'll keep an eye on the chat. And I'll just go on to my logo so I can have a quick drag off camera of my vape okay I'm still here don't worry thanks my great thank you very much David I'm glad you enjoyed it the audio sync here is good oh that's good Michael thank you you don't have to worry you don't look like a poor spaghetti mist <laughs> no seen too many of those Michael 
Mark Baldwin, could you show us how to turn an egg cup? The kind use breakfast soft old egg, yeah. Yes, um, Mark Baldwin, I've turned many egg cups that were started life out as goblets. But no, egg cups are great fun. They're great fun. Very easy to turn. I, I don't mean that to sound uh, pompous, but they are an easy turn. You know, they're great. And they're good skill builder as well. Brilliant video catch up. Thanks very much, Kirsty. Apologies again for getting the gender wrong, and thanks very much for coming. I'll hopefully, see you next time. Cheers, my good crack. Thanks. Glad you enjoyed it, Martin. It's very kind of you, mate. You take care and give my love to Natalia. Thank you for coming. Chas Carpenter, glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming, mate. Matt Harbour, yeah. It's just like turning a goblet, exactly. It's just like turning a goblet, turning an egg cup with, without the stem. It's the easy bit, if you like. Ah, thank you, Leisure. It's very nice of you. Robert Schaefer, thank you indeed. And I hope to see you maybe next week when I'm on again. It's now a horror picture. <laughs> Was that me? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is the horror. <coughs> Michael, Michael Roy, is, is that better? Does that, does that cover it up a bit more? Is that better? <laughs> that was for Michael Roy, because I, I, was, I was frightening him. Shay, thanks very much for coming, mate. I appreciate it. See you next time. Look forward to it. What's the best way to store wood for turning? Uh, basically, if you can let the air go through it, if it's in log form or in limb form, keep them as long as possible and seal the ends with either wax or anchor seal, some form of proprietary brand or indeed latex paint and leave it. A um, bit too, not much time on this for, for that sort of thing, but if you search on the internet or on YouTube there's plenty of good videos and information about how long you should store it for, should you want to turn it dry. Cheers Dave, I appreciate it. Build another raised plant, oh my god, you're going into the raised plant business. Enjoy, you give my love to Fee Dave, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael Stratton. Look forward to it, mate. Good night, Michael Wright. Thanks very much for coming. Cheers now. See you again. Late to the party. Yeah, never mind, Digital Eye. You got here. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot, Kirsty. You take care. Slave to the lathe. Terry Frank, thanks, Mike. Great show. Thank you. We're glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Roberto. Till next time, my friend. Okay, what I've got to do is bid you all a very good bye and I sincerely thank you all for turning up. So I'll see you hopefully next Wednesday at 7.30 Greenwich Mean Time. Now all I've got to do is find out how to stop. <laughs> right, got it. Cheers all, you take care. Thanks Joseph. See you soon. See you, Leisure. Thank you. Bye. I'm going now.